So, in keeping with the uh, theme, that if you're watching this channel, you're likely got passing interest in uh, automotive uh, systems and technology. If you know something about automobiles, there's a good chance you know something about airliners. So, the parallel I'd like to discuss in this episode, shall we call it, is actually regarding air conditioning. So, I'm not going to go through this air conditioning uh, system in great detail, because I've already done so. I'll post the link to the... <laughs> ridiculously detailed version of my explanation of an uh, automotive air conditioning system somewhere up here. But anyway, we'll go briefly through this just, just to make a parallel. So here we've got a traditional uh, air conditioning system. We've got the compressor, so we'll start at the uh, uh, refrigerant return. So we have uh, low pressure refrigerant, come back to the compressor. Compressor, as the name implies, of course, compresses that gas, so we transition into a high pressure gas. The high pressure gas is forwarded to the condenser coil. The condenser coil, again, as the name implies, will condense the refrigerant from a gas to a liquid. Anytime we have uh, condensation happening, we have the ability to expel a great deal of heat through the latent heat of uh, condensation. If you don't know what that is, Google it. Super interesting. So we have the uh, liquid line. Now send uh, the liquid refrigerant up to the... Um, It'll be a, a metering uh, mechanism of some sort, fixed orifice, or in this case, an expansion valve. As the, as the liquid refrigerant actually goes through the expansion valve, it will transition from uh, the liquid state in, into the evaporator itself. Because there's a drop in pressure, the liquid refrigerant will actually boil, transitioning from a liquid to a, back to a gas, and we have evaporation going on. Uh, not surprisingly inside the evaporator so latent heat of evaporation says that anytime we evaporate something we can actually absorb a great deal of heat energy what heat energy the heat energy that is going through the plenum forced through the, by the blower and we can actually cool the interior of the car and then of course the refrigerant makes its way back to the compressor and the whole system actually repeats itself the vapor cycle so this is the uh, turbo diesel var variant of the uh, Grand Vitara. Uh, in Canada here, we unfortunately never did see this version available uh, on our shores, but I think it's uh, available uh, throughout the rest of the world, I believe. Um, any case, why am I showing you a diesel Vitara? Well, what I want to focus on is actually, it's a turbo diesel. Here's the turbo itself. I don't know a damn thing about diesels or turbos, but this is an interesting parallel. Stick with me and you'll get the point momentarily. So just brief explanation of how the system actually works. The air comes actually in, comes to the compressor section of the uh, turbocharger, which of course traditionally driven by the turbine side. We'll get to that in a minute. So we take our uh, atmospheric air, actually compress it through the compressor in the uh, turbo itself, and we come to this air-to-air -air heat exchanger. You might know it as an intercooler. So we actually, uh, of course, what we, the, the function of the intercooler is to drop the temperature of the charge, the charge air, in order to get uh, cooler air, which translates to higher density, advantageous for the uh, induction system. So we have that going into the intake system. Of course, the engine does its thing, uh, four stroke cycle, and then we have the exhaust actually expelled from the engine, and that's what actually drives the turbine common spool, which of course drives the compressor, and the whole system actually repeats itself. We just have, um, uh, I think we have some emission concerns here on the backside, and from all the boys that I watch on YouTube, they're thoroughly anti uh, diesel particulate filters, and tons of stuff about that, so this is the uh, particulate filter for the diesel system, catalytic converter. So anyway, in a nutshell, that's how that works, but what I wanted you to focus on was the actual uh, turbocharger itself, compressor and turbine. Why? Well, let's take a look at the next drawing. So as I said, you know something about automotive systems? In particular, air conditioning and turbochargers? You probably know a lot more about an airliner than you ever realized. So what we have here is a perhaps grossly oversimplified uh, drawing of an uh, air conditioning pack and how it actually works on a on a modern airliner is We have um, a ram air system That ram air system actually is utilized to provide cooling air 
over two heat exchangers, a primary and a secondary heat exchanger, but they're no different than, than intercoolers. They're simply air to air heat exchangers. So that's the point of this system. Virtually every airliner will have it, but operating the heart of the system is actually what's called our air cycle machine. Air cycle machine as opposed to a vapor cycle machine. So if you look at it, it looks an awful lot like you can see the family resemblance to a turbocharger. So we have a compressor and we have a turbine. So how does this system work? Without getting bogged down in the, uh, in the detail, what we'll do is we'll tap some bleed air off the engine. Turbine engines traditionally have multiple compressor stages, plenty of air going through the engine. We can steal some for air conditioning and pressurization purposes. So we'll, take, we'll tap some air off the, uh, the engine. Typically it comes in and around Let's keep it simple, say 200 degrees Celsius at 2 bar, 30 PSI-ish, and it actually comes in, goes through the primary heat exchanger, because the air exchanger over here will dump some of its heat energy before it comes into the compressor section here. That air will actually go into the compressor here, which is being spun just like in a turbocharger by the turbine section. It's compressed, it'll actually go up in uh, temperature and pressure, it comes through a secondary heat exchanger where we dump that temperature, some of its pressure, of course, temperature pressure relationship, and feed it back into the, the uh, turbine. Here's where the magic comes. There's no magic, it's physics. In the ACM turbine section, it actually the uh, heat energy is utilized, is converted from thermal energy into kinetic energy in order to spin the shaft, of course, and at the same time, it's allowed to expand between the two there is a massive drop in temperature here we can actually get temperatures discharging into the cabin well in excess of zero degrees so when you're sitting on the ramp in the summer waiting to go on your holiday you're nice and comfortable in the cabin thanks to this rig right here and i think you can you can easily see the family resemblance to a turbocharger you understand a car you're well on your way to understanding an, an airliner's air conditioning system that's it hope that made some sense boys Cheers.